try. I'm now currently at the RECV in my little room here, which is quite all right. I'm about to go off to the dinner with the industrial hemp people with some award and this is a very nice room that they have here and out there is Burke Street I don't know what we can see in Burke Street I see a tram the trams are a bit further out there I can hear one coming So come along there. There's one there. One of our Melbourne trams. Okay, well, that's enough testing now. This is the Jag in the front room. Jag six six six. I'm now near Graduate House. This uh, area here used to be covered in these big trees reaching up twice that height, or three times, until they decided they would, uh, the government decided they'd build a train station tunnel under here and put a station entrance just, I think, where that white building is. Um, of course, if it had been a private developer, they would never have got permission to knock all the trees down, would they? But that is what has happened. It's just all of a sudden done. Anyway, it'll be good when the station's there, but... Um, it's taking a while. I'm going up there to Graduate House there. I think I can get... That's it on camera. That's where I'm heading to. So I think the train will come out here, the station. And look, there's some old buildings up there. And this is... I'm going to Here I am the graduate house very few minutes we don't want to talk too much today but uh, so that's really I have to acknowledge uh, what Darren has done more than that is Darren and David and we are very good friends it's uh, it's more than the professional relationship we are very good friends uh, David drove me one day to Darren's house and uh, we had a very good chat I haven't done that yet he mentioned that I should come and stay with him on a Saturday I'm going to do that <laughs> on Saturday drink red wine <laughs> Yeah, so we had a very, in fact, very nice place Darren has. Anyone in near him south, you know, one of the beautiful areas. Uh, uh, we know the uh, Mount Hotham, uh, no, it's Mount uh, Bobo, Bobo. Bobo, Bobo next to that. Very, uh, everyone, I think it's very beautiful area. So coming back to rather than, um, I will not talk too much. I think we have, we have to also acknowledge and welcome everyone who has come from, as we said, far away. And not only we had three presidents of the different associations, uh, but uh, I think it's really having the uh, everyone some so, so many different states. Some joined from uh, from um, from uh, other states, 
I think we can call it uh, this bringing a national forum together, which really, uh, I think the first time, I'm sure uh, I, uh, I could be, uh, I think I'm, I'm definitely, I, I can defend what okay. I'm saying, because I've, I've done, a, I've just been there for a little bit of time now, uh, after Darren introduced and after, uh, through uh, David introduced me to this area. Uh, I, I know that, uh, of course, I've been you know, keeping my eyes open, and I know that nationally there was no event like that. And it's a bit fractured at the moment, nationally, we know that. Different states doing different things. And uh, we, we talked about, uh, uh, yeah, we, we actually, in fact, uh, there are other people who have a lot of experience, team here to many others here. John here just mentioned. And uh, it's all that uh, I can't, every table, if I go through, go around, they're all specialists. But, uh, uh, but also, I can't miss in this table, Mary and uh, uh, Dr. Parmajit here, Dr. Marys and Dr. Parmajit. Uh, so every time I talk to them, I learn something as well. But I, rather than going, I, I won't spend too much time and to really uh, to going through everything. But I take the, it's as a special occasion. Uh, and we had a bit of a history uh, being, uh, history was mentioned here today, how the Global Health Conference started. And uh, it's really, I didn't expect David to say this, but you know, I. I you, you are someone who acknowledged me introducing uh, Prof. Aziz at that time when he came to do a sabbatical with me. And he was, I uh, didn't realize uh, Dr. Kobe is one of his good friends at that time. And so, uh, but uh, the, so how you mentioned how it started, um, uh, actually I had a, I think I had some other uh, issue with my uh, playing cricket, some other issue with my leg, so I couldn't join the conference first one. Uh, I was keen to join, but uh, I was not allowed to travel and play for a little bit of time, a few months. Uh, to really having, uh, and also not only uh, done this work, keeping in that region, the, I think, most active. There's no doubt about that. It's very, as an as a academic institution, of course, industries we talked about, uh, most active in that part of the world, and uh, academic institutions. I don't know, uh, David, no, David, Darren may also say this, but I don't see, I didn't see much about, no, no, I didn't see much about US and Europe and academic institutions doing uh, work. So rather than taking time, uh, again, thank you, David. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is the, the least we can do for you, uh, Dr. Kobe, uh, to acknowledge you for uh, be coming here and really being present here and spending time with us. So thank you. Thank you. Would like to say a couple of words here? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, actually, I didn't expect it at all. Uh, it's my honor to be here. Uh, from all of the presentation I heard today, I studied a lot, really, and uh, I'm so happy to be in this uh, great continent, great country, and meet all of these uh, good people that are living here. And uh, I'll. I have a perspective of an outsider, and you should all be very, very happy to to live here and and work here and uh, be part of this uh, wonderful community. And I wish you all uh, very, very, very best in all of your endeavors and uh, pro progress in the subject that we are all talking about it. Thank you. In, thank you. in this uh, conference. So again, thank you so very much. Uh, on my behalf, on my, the behalf of my family, and also as uh, the current representative of the Ariel University to the conference. Thank you so oh, much. It's uh, Darren's and, uh, that's fine, Dr. Thank you. It's Darren's and David's event, this one, right? <laughs> oh, we've been used to modern times. Uh, listen, well, just once again, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm the president of Lion Victoria. Uh, I might just, I'm not going to say too much now because a little bit later we've got a bit of an introduction to do and it's history of the uh, industry. And I've gone back, you know, 20 odd years, and what I'll do is bring in bit of history and create that, that path where I've sort of come from and part of our industry in the early, early days. Um, first of all, I've just got to thank 
David and Sally once again for doing such a, a fantastic job. Um, if it wasn't for them I've been telling you it wouldn't have happened. So that, that's how it works. Uh, I want to thank my committee for being here. Uh, There's probably a, two of them missing. We've had a few changes in the last few years, but that's okay. It happens in associations. They get a bit messy, they go up and down, but you know, I've still got a, a, a lot of backing by some very, very, very good people. Um, and the other thing is, I, I just want to say what a great bunch of people I've met in the last, since 2016, all doctors, Ben, Hannes, David, uh, I, Graham, uh, <laughs> everybody that I've actually met through this this whole journey with me is absolutely brilliant and the kindness and what they give back to me as a friend is quite amazing. So, you know, uh, I want to give them a round of applause. That, 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 that. I want to give more names. We're going to have dinner soon and then after dinner I'd like to um, welcome uh, a very kind, amazing gentleman, Mr. Tony Clark. His brother Adrian passed, I don't know, a few, six years ago. It would have been six, Tony. 2015 he died. 2015. <coughs> what, 15th of Seven. October 2015. And I'm just going to, we're going to tell a story about Adrian and the past and, and how I got into the industry. So please enjoy and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was me speaking there. I do speak every now and again. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MCG. Colin, what's going to win on Saturday? What sport? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, football, Aussie rules. Oh, sailing, you want to come at me up? Yeah, I'm down at Locksville, mate. <laughs> you want me to talk about Collingwood? Who uh, barracks at Collingwood here? <laughs> no wonder a lot of the industry hate you. You're a of Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. Listen, <laughs> once again, thank you, thank you so much. This is quite amazing to get a global hand summit going. Three years, three years in the making, two years of COVID. That's quite bizarre, you know. Um, and, and, and the people at Melbourne University are absolutely amazing, and I mean amazing. Um, <laughs> they're like, they're, and they're a family, really, at the end of the day, that's what I see. Um, without going too much further, I am just going to go back in history with the um, hemp industry, just a wee bit, 20 years of my time, uh, probably, you know, $800,000 later, you know, in between bits and pieces and selling and buying and blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't matter because it's not about the money. It's about the industry and, and, and pushing hard and seeing where we go. Um, our association um, started oh, probably, let me go back in time. And I'm going to bring up Lynn Stevenson's name because she actually started uh, the Industrial Hemp Association of Victoria. But, but what I'm going to say here is, I was in the industry five or six years beforehand, um, and, and I'm going to bring up Mr. Tony Clark a little bit later, because I want people to understand how this actually started to roll back in my time with, with Phil Warner. I mentioned Peter Simmel and the great Phil Warner at one stage. Okay, so that's four people that I knew 20 years ago. And when I rang up, I don't know if I've told the story briefly, I might have. Um, Phil Warner, g'day Phil, Darren Christie's my name, I'm a builder. And he goes, Will, you're a builder, what do you want fibre for? And I went, what do I want fibre for? I'm trying to save the trees, mate. Well, what's hemp going to do? 
What do you mean, save the trees? Okay, well, my vision was yes, this, this might happen. In the end, Tony Clark, his brother Adrian, I rang him. And there was no, uh, what I call, internet much back then. It was just sort of starting to evolve. You'd pick up phone numbers, you know, and, and ring somebody. Well, anyway, I ring Adrian Clark. And I heard this word, decorticator. And I, it took me probably 18 months to get around it because I'm going, boom, decorticator, decorticator, decorticator. What's a decorticator? Decorticator. How do I get this decorticator? Is that a power saw or, or is that a, you know, a bench grinder or a decorticator? How does this work? Oh, well, you better come and see me. And you're a builder. I said, yeah, I'm a builder. You're the man we need. I'm going, oh, okay, so you're the man we need. What's that going to do? It's going to it's going to create industry. Anyway, 20 years later, here we are sitting at um, you know Melbourne University, and that's that's a little bit of my trip. But but what's going on is absolutely quite amazing. How far ahead? When even my first house I did for um, uh, Phil Warner. No, it wasn't Phil Warner. He sold he sold um, some product to Tasmania. They built the first house there. Phil bought in Hempcrete, the first original Hempcrete sort of package, bought it in, built that house in Tassie. I built the second one in Melbourne uh, under Melbourne Homes um, Distinction. Uh, dis Melbourne Distinction Homes, blah, 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 back in, back in 2011, 12. Um, and all I got was, what's that stuff, mate? Hemp. And mind you, we've got 25 tradies on the job. And the architect we were working with back then was, was Stefan Welsh. Um, and he still brings me today doing other jobs. All you got was, how much of that stuff do you smoke, mate? <laughs> Where does hemp come from, mate? Oh, well, actually, it should come from our seeds. Hmm. Yeah, what's in it, mate? Are you smoking to sell me some, mate? And this is going on all day for weeks. You know, in the end, that sort, sort of got me hell-bent on, you know what, don't worry about this crap. Just move on with the bigger picture. So anyway, the bigger picture turns out with Adrian and, and, and Phil, things were starting to move pretty well. I'd, I'd like to invite Adrian Clark, um, Tony Clark up actually, because I want to just take you on a smaller journey as well, how it actually started in Victoria. So Tony, would you come up? I'm going to ask you some questions, please, mate. But this is just going to go on for five or ten minutes. Our, our conversation about how this industry actually started and the decorticator, which is quite amazing. A lot of my industry do not believe it, but what we see and what we did from a decorticator this big to up here. Well, it could be probably four times as wide, really, because we need the volume to mass produce stuff in the future. But Tony, can you just explain to me about how Adrian and yourself actually got into the industry? We're going back. Well, what actually happened was Adrian was watching this film called The Billion, uh, billion Dollar Crop, all about industrial hemp. And um, he and his father-in-law worked out that you could actually decorticate this hemp green instead of what they did in Europe where they decorticated it after retting for several months in the field, taking up the field for several months. And so they invented this machine called the decorticator. Um, and Initially, it was just doing one, one stream at a time, and then um, we developed the machine that does about a ton an hour um, of hemp. But it's done green, so it, because hemp, you probably don't know, but hemp will, um, when you cut it, all the uh, the glues in it, the lectins, or whatever. Um, they all coalesce and they make the hemp really hard within 10 minutes. But if you can decorticate in that first 10 minutes of green hemp, you've got it all separated. And that's what our machine does. Our machine also decorticates it after it's been um, 
there, uh, sitting for months in, in things. But really, the biggest problem is when people round bail it and bail it in um, uh, as a very hard bail because it squeezes out the the little um, tube thing that, that that is in the hemp. That there's a, a space in the hemp that you don't want to be squashed and these hard balers do that and that, that can't go through the machine very easily. So um, if you soft bail or just bail it just very loosely, it can still go through the machine even months later. Uh, I'm just going to add to that a little bit, if you know what you want. Yep. So, watch back, right? As I started to, um, and I met the famous Tony Clark I call him, his brother, Adrian, when I met these guys, we started down at Bankburn, is that right? Or somewhere down Oh, you were just Bankburn, yes, yeah, that's right. Bank Bank we were down there. I'd, I'd seen um, Adrian with the small machines, this, that. We actually put the, the, the head, remember the head? Charles, I think Charles might have been just coming into the industry. No, it wasn't Charles, it was somebody else. We, we had a toe behind. This is how interesting it was. The toe behind with the decorder cater. Remember that on the tractor? It's a PBA. Well, that's right, because we actually had one of these in England. We would have gone to England with a machine that you were towed behind. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, they had a PDO shaft, a PDO driven, yeah. and we had this machine set up. And believe me, it was like, oh, this one come out of the ark. I was thinking, oh, God, what are these guys thinking? Anyway. As, as we sort of, there was some hemp being grown, Benny Burn, I don't know if it was Brent down here at the time, I can't remember. Um, anyway, we got, the, we got the hemp crop in the ground, decided to cut it. Wind rough. The way we set this machine up was quite bizarre. As, as it went wind rough, you could see the hemp coming up inside the machine. We've got the straw walker, no, we've got a. Uh, we had something set so up. It was like a straw walker. Yeah, but that was for the. Right enough. Yeah, but heard <laughs> Remember, so anyway, it just got to a stage where I'm going, this ain't going to work. Anyway, Adrian's looking at me, he's going, you watch, it'll work. No, oh, yeah, right, huh? Why, why, Tony? I mean, why, Adrian? Well, here's the theory. Here's the theory. Oh, yeah, it's good. Oh, okay. And she's feeding up nicely and it's all laid out and we're running and she's coming in the machine. All of a sudden you hear this grinding and this stuff going on and there's, there's the herd going up the conveyor belt, dropping the little bag that way. And here's this follow up and this, uh, I'll say this to the day I die, it looked like cotton wool falling on the ground. And Tony's, uh, Adrian's going, that's it, that's it, that's how it works. I'm looking at him and going, it's like cotton wool. How do we pick that up? <laughs> I don't know, we have to figure that one out later, aren't we? So that's the way that I actually met Adrian on this trip with the Cortico. A lot of industry people don't believe it, they don't want to believe it, but guess what? It's true. The setup, the mechanism, the way him is done this way. And believe me, there's some great stuff going on in the industry. And what Adrian was all about was long fibre. Okay? So it was all about stripping the long fibre. And that's what it was all about. We were 200 kilo bales. We went down that path. We want long fibre. What do you want long fibre for? Clothing. Well, it was about clothing. And that's what TCL was about. Food. Clothing. That's what it was all about. So as I come in the picture, I'm going, oh well, well let's stay with the long fibre, but I want insulation mats, or I want this, or I want that, and I want the food. So, you know, Tony, after as Tom Adrian passed, there's still a great belief that even in the industry, um, in, in each state, they're hammer milling, they're putting it in the headers, they're doing that, they're bailing it in 150 billets or 600 billets. Oh, they're doing this and they're doing that. Sorry, John, you can cut the stuff down at 15 foot high if you can, mate. Not a problem, but you know, what we do, um, and, and I, I've learned myself integrity in the fog, if that's the case. You know, how, how far do we actually have to go before we actually get an industry right? 
you know, and, that, and that's how I see it from the, this decortication side. Um, uh, what else am I thinking here? Well, well, I'm thinking Adrian always used to talk about the fibre. Yes. I, which was the third of the crop. And I would say, now, what about the other two thirds? The herd. Oh, it's only not worth very much. No, it was worth a lot of money. And I wanted it to be processed. And I could see that the herd and the fibre, both together, would work. And of course, there seemed to be more market, really, for the herd. Well, you're right there because when I first um, started looking at, at, at the herd, I'm thinking, oh, that's a great chip. It's just like one chip, you know, fantastic. Yeah. But it was like, it was like yeah. balsa. And I'm going, oh, oh. And then all of a sudden, it, it was the hemp creek coming out of Europe. Yeah. Right? Going, oh, here we go. And that was still warm. Yeah. This is the, the, the new movement for, for building these houses. So yeah. that's exactly correct. But, I, I went more towards the, the herd because I started looking at chip on time, this, that, creating the building, you know. Oh, that'll work, that'll, that's easy. That's simple. Are you seeing Fire, that? well, yes, it's all easy about clothing. So, Linden, one with the glass. No, it's a bit out of my league. Linden would be great. A bit out of my league, but maybe in the future. Thank you. So, you know, and that, that's how I see it. Yeah. So the reason, Tony, yeah. we actually invited you up here this evening to give a bit of a um, uh, talk. Oh, oh, please, oh, hang on. Please. We know. 1994. Well, 1994 was when I took the prospect of him through the Studley Park branch. It's a Liberal Party. And I'm still a Liberal Party member. And that went to state council at the Liberal Party in '94, um, and where it was um, endorsed by about 300 delegates, one voting against, but the, the members. And Jeff Kennett was in support of it, and the members and the ministers. And that's why hemp got legalised in Victoria. And um, then in 1995, we had the trial crop for hemp, and the first trial crop was at Porpunka. The farm there, Davies Farm or something, and um, that grew really well. And uh, but we were only on trial crop for a few years, and it was all meant to be comes full blown hemp industry by about 99, 2000. But unfortunately, the government changed, and the new government didn't issue any hemp licences. The Labor government didn't issue the hemp licences. So for years things were held up in Victoria until the government changed again. And then we got some new hemp licenses. Um, but uh, there were several crops grown. I've got lots of videos of them up on my internet site that you can see even back at that 1995, that's up there. I remember Andrew Cavallaris down in Tasmania on stage. I'm sure he was about 30 years ago. Andrew Cavallaris. Anybody who knows Andrew Cavallaris, he's now the president of New South Wales, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There. Yes, <laughs> correct. He's a wacko, great bloke, isn't he? Speaking for yourself. Oh, he's not that. Oh, you reckon I'm a wacko? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Hang on, there's a room full of us <laughs> in the hemp industry. <laughs> I thought you were asking me to come up here and do the little toast. Oh, well, if you want to, we do it after. I, 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 don't, I don't think most of these people like that. No. I, mean, I do that at the night to St. John. Okay, the reason, the reason um, Tony, we've invited you here is um, I've actually left a few things at home, but like I'll, I'll just explain again, Lynn Stevenson actually started the Industrial Hemp Association uh, about six or seven years after I got into the industry, um, collectively got members, etc, etc. She's sort of moved past that stage. Um, she's in another association. Um, I took over the presidency just before COVID for, I think, for a year or so. We were organising functions, we were at the home show, we were here, we were there. We, we haven't done a lot of advertising, we've done a lot of advocating for IHIP Victoria. But um, what we've done is we've changed our constitution over the years and we've actually made 
um, Anthony Lowenclock. Yes, that's the last one. Anthony Lowenclock, his brother Adrian Clark. We actually you know, bought, we brought him into the Hall of Fame as wife members for oh. our association. I forgot to bring the card, but I'll bring that up for you. We can applause for the What we have done is thank you, Mary. Sorry, how's your fingers? We've engaged, we've engaged the concept drawing in three dimensional. And it's, it took us a while to think about this, but I want you to have a look at this. You can, Pass it around a bit later, but it's a concept machine that we'll present to you at, at, at some other stage when we get it come up. But it's a better than called a Cady machine. Great. All right. Sounds great. Sounds all right to you? Yep. Uh, we're going to put you on a plane, you know, to Honolulu or something like that. We'll <laughs> sort. That would look good at your place, mate, with, with all the rest of your relics. <laughs> oh, I've got lots of relics Have you? I've seen yours. Anyway, this is what we're going to present. Who is Leslie from? Who? Oh, Leonie. She's Leonie. Oh, Leonie. She's still there. Leslie. Thank you, Leonie, for the filming time. This is going to go on YouTube as well. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Because I've got 500, 600 videos on YouTube. Oh, and uh, there are probably 20 videos of the amps. So I've got a lot of stuff up there. Um, but there were, but there's mainly Melbourne rock bands that I've got up in the training grounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, amongst all of that, it's tough to do this. Oh, and me doing the loyal toast of the um, Knights of St. John's Hospital. Oh, so I, I do those. Well, ladies and gentlemen, can you yeah. just... Can we see the, the picture? Room? Can we see what's on the iPad? Okay. Can we see it? Like it would help if other people could see it, I'm sure. Sorry. Well, I'm a guest, but I'll be guessing. That's just where good guess. Yes. See? Ah. I can't. Oh, let me just hone in. Oh, my God, it works. It will be made up through steel and Fantastic. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Very interesting day. I can see the, the future in building. Um, it, it wasn't all about so much farming, but it was, uh, it's growing into the building side. It's, it's going to be a big day tomorrow. There's going to be some heated discussions. I can see that coming up. There's going to be a few things going on where everybody's an expert, I'm an expert, and when I call myself an expert, I'm a trip under pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Brienne. Oh, sorry, David, would you like to just come up and... Thank you. Close I, I just couldn't see where you were for no about five get, minutes. No, I just moved to get out of the road. I'm still running. I haven't pushed it off. Thank you to Darren and I am Victoria um, because it really is uh, very, very auspicious, the industry coming together to acknowledge the work um, of um, the late Adrian Clark and his brother Tony who is with us. So it's really a pretty historic event and um, you know, it's an honour and a privilege to be here and I want to thank Darren for all of the help that he's given our students because for us it's all about the students but for you it's about the industry and it's about commercialization and so forth i just hope that the university can help um, bring you together to cooperate um, the crcp healing carbon wounds is 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 very poignant because um, if we can bring the industry together uh, and recognise that there are diverse opinions, that we respect the diverse opinions and, and we move forward cohesively, that would make life a lot easier um, for the gov governments um, in Victoria and around Australia. That's, that's for sure. So if the university can, 
can help in that, uh, I'm sure Professor Mendes um, would be willing to to help as well. So, thank you very, very much, Darren. Thank you very, very much, Tony. Professor Mendes. Yes. Actually, uh, this is so I can get into finite element analysis. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very kind of you, but I don't want to really, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, again, that this is all happening because of, uh, I put Sally first, uh, I'm sure David is all right to say, because of Sally and David, we are all uh, here like this. And uh, there's no doubt about this discussion we had today, uh, I don't think I, we have ever heard this sort of national, international type of discussion. I will not repeat what I said about Dr. Kobe's to coming from all the way from uh, from that other side of the world to really uh, uh, to to coming down down under, right? Uh, and then to be with us and uh, to be everywhere. It's amazing. And but we talked about Peru as well now to be here. Thank you very much. Not just the, uh, in Australia, we all have been so many places. No, yeah, but thank you very much. And I think that we have thanked for everybody. But, but also, the, I think we have not thanked some other people. Uh, we had very, uh, Darren, we had very nice piano music. Uh, uh, she's gone now, I think, the one who plays the piano. But to really, uh, to many other things. But the main thing I want to just be here is very quickly is to thank I have Victoria and uh, again uh, Darren um, you mentioned about uh, to go and see that decodification machine and I had a chance uh, again to to go with Darren and David to see the machine amazing work done by I think we must remember Mr. Adrian Clark you know uh, late Mr. Adrian Clark who has been the inventor and I'm sure one of the first in the world, I'm sure that mm. machine was not just Australia, I think. <laughs> now we are talking about decodification machines. So today there are presentations. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's there. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, uh, I think, I don't know how we do that. I think we should uh, have another way of recognizing uh, let Mr. Adrian Clark. And we are honored to have Mr. Tony Clark here. Uh, to who was a uh, uh, like a part of the invention as well Change the uh, name to be here and so um, and so I think these are the uh, again we are we are here now talking about today uh, I have to say this story uh, I make it a bit more informal but uh, I have this story when I talk about the carbon numbers there we, can see you. we all talk about carbon numbers today uh, I have to put some copyright in this case by I compare the carbon with the Bitcoin. I put only $600, so I lost half of it uh, so, because the uh, Bitcoin prices went down. I didn't go at the initially, but uh, but I'm, I'm thinking of rather investing on Bitcoin just to invest on carbon now because the, uh, because I think it's, uh, it's like the hype, you know, created at that time for Bitcoins. And then, um, yeah, so, uh, but I think it's the same in carbon. Carbon has a big future, but we all talk today. I think the main thing we talked about different ways of achieving that uh, from Mr. Red Indian, Mr. Indian Clark's decodification idea to how we are now. I think it's all about uh, opportunities have been created. Then I don't think even at that time we knew that uh, uh, the carbon is going to be uh, so big now and. We, we talked about the carbon numbers, and uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we talked about the whole day, if you think about one line, what we achieved the day today in the conferences about the, about the hemp is a huge contributor to, to that uh, carbon. And, uh, and the, just that, we're not saying, we're not after that, but I think uh, it's someone who wants to there, there are opportunities for there are some younger people in this in this room for not only younger people we we consider we are young as well but, but, <laughs> the, but uh, to be a huge opportunity to be really exploiting that hemp uh, word uh, to really be a link to carbon finally I like what 
Mr. Darren said about the definition of him. I've never heard like that. Healthy. No, no, yeah, let, let me say oh, sorry, I'm not, no. your words, it's, it's, about, it's about you, Brian. No, 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 you're not <laughs> right, but I want to remember. Yeah, Healthy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Environment. Uh, uh, manufacturing. Material. No. Yeah, manufacturing yeah. products. Manufacturing products. Being so, sorry. I had a few drinks, but I still. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here. And I think uh, finally, uh, just be uh, again reiterate, uh, thank uh, Sally and David for huge amount of work yes. being put in here. We all can talk here. And I know Darren, you're behind of this whole thing. And Kobe, all, Dr. Kobe, all the way coming from East time made a huge difference for us on behalf of many from Australia here. And New Zealand, she's not here, looks like. Uh, she's not, you know, we had a uh, very, very uh, uh, active person from, forgotten her name, but from New Zealand. Uh, Jessie? She's not here, I don't see her. Sorry, I can't see too much now. A few drinks. <laughs> just joking. Just joking. Just joking. But, uh, sorry. but thank you very much. Enjoy the day. And, uh, we are, and actually, my talk is at 8.30. I've advertised it that now. I don't think anyone wants to be there at 8.30 tomorrow. All the <laughs>